You're back in the shop with me, guys. And this week on the channel, we're gonna build a custom-shaped charcuterie board. So, stick around. I'm Stoner Erickson from Erickson Design Company, and let's build something. Ta About six months ago, I was milling up some uh, specialty moldings out of walnut in my shop, and I had kind of glued up this hard maple walnut uh, charcuterie board blank or cutting board blank. I like to have these kind of around the shop so that when someone orders one, I have one ready to go. So let's make it out of this. Let's hop right into it. I'm gonna remove the table saw fence. I'm gonna use my cross cut sled to cut this thing in about a half. I'm gonna leave an extra inch on the other side because I have a plan for what I'm gonna do with that. I've jointed one side of this board so I know that it's straight, that's why I flipped it over. Now I'm gonna be making an end grain cutting board, charcuterie board here. So I'm gonna set my table saw up to about one inches away from the blade. So I'll have one inch strips. After all is said and done, I want this to finish at around seven eighths of an inch. That gives me a sixteenth of an inch per side to kind of sand off and take off. And I'll just zip those through. I'm gonna use this longer push stick. It kind of holds the front end down. I like this push stick for smaller stuff like that. And safety is the most important thing in this shop. I try to really respect the tools because they will bite you and it'll hurt and it'll do serious damage. Next, I'm gonna set up my tabletop surface with a scrap piece of doubled up birch plywood. I had made some uh, floating couches a few months back. So I'm gonna use this piece for my glue up. I'm gonna cover it with tape and I'm gonna get my clamps out. The process of getting set up for a glue up like this I line it kind of all up and then I'm gonna hand sand the one and two sides that I cut off of to make sure I don't have any furs or burrs sticking out. I take some blue tape, line my clamps with it, measure and cut some extra scrap pieces, line those with blue tape, and then put paste wax over the whole thing. And then I'm gonna lay out the way I want the cutting board or the security board to go. I'll flip it all over and then liberally spread a ton of glue. I want glue on every square inch. Then I'll just roll the pieces back over. The end pieces will kind of roll into each other. I'll attach my flattening braces with some F clamps. I'll use a little pinch clamp first. These are gonna keep it flat as I tighten it down. It's gonna to wanna to kind of pull up a little bit. So I find that this is the best way to keep it nice and flat. Then I wanna see that sexy glue squeeze out. So to make the best use of my time, I've actually, while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and carve a couple stackable bowls out of this other piece, because I'm tired of seeing it in the shop. That way they have a chips and salsa bowl. So let's get into that. Now I'm kind of designing this on the fly, but I think using up this scrap piece of wood is a great idea. I'll go ahead and screw it down. You know, the X-Carve comes with a bunch of clamps and stuff to hold it down with. I really don't use those. Screws are fine for me. It's what works best for me. I'll home the machine. I'll set the carve, I'll set the probe, I'll slide the enclosure closed, put the front door on, and let's get to carving. And guys, if you like fun and creative videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Do it, and do it now. Plus, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you guys, and I actually do comment back. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok and Instagram. It's a great way to stay in the loop. Now you can see here when I pull the cover back, all of that dust gets trapped in. And one of my favorite things to do is vacuum up dust. I know it sounds weird, but something so satisfying about it. But I'll go ahead and vacuum up all the dust. I'll remove the screws and I'll pull the car for the nesting bowls. Came out awesome. Couldn't be more happy with that. Now I'm gonna run this through the Jet 1632 drum sander at 220 to just kind of clean it up and make sure it's ready for a glue up. I use my jigsaw to cut out the tabs. If any of you guys have a better way of doing that, please let me know. As I kind of stack these nesting bowls up, I realize that I have room to make a third one. I was only going to make two. But I'm going to quickly get over to the glue up. It's set up enough for me to get it off the clamps, and I'm going to clean up all this glue. I'm actually going to use an orbital sander, and I'm going to kind of sand over it with an 80 grit, and this is going to give some fine dust to go down and, and fill any pockets in the actual glue up lines. This will fill any frays or burrs. It actually really works well. It's a great little tip. Then I'll head over to the 1632. I've changed the grit on this to 120 now. I'll do several passes to get it to close to a hand sand, and then I'll reset up the carve. I'll screw it down. Now this time we're gonna be carving the guitar-shaped charcuterie board. This is a file I found on Easel, which is the software that comes with the CNC, and it was just scaled it to my project, home the machine, did a probe, set the carve up, 
put the cover on, and then let's get to carving. Now as that's carving, I'm going to do a pre-glue up to the bowls. So I like to take my glue, set it on there, then I like to let my glue set up for about five minutes before I clamp it down. That way the glue's not sliding all the little pieces of wood around. Now this carve only took 18 minutes. I only carved down a quarter of an inch into it. And it looks so good. But why I didn't carve all the way down through it is for time management. I can take my jigsaw and cut flush up against it as close as I can get to it. And then I can move over to my router table and I have a flush cut bit on the router bit. This saves me oodles and oodles of time in carve time. And I just gently pass it through. Now I do have to go from the back side and do a flush cut around it because it was just a little frayed out from when I used my jigsaw to cut it through. But this is a way I save a ton of time on my carves by not carving all the way down through them and utilizing multiple tools of tools in my shop. And I'll tell you, it works great. And a little dust cleanup and it's good to go. Little pro tip, I always use this kitchen scale to weigh out my epoxy. There'll be a link in the description below if you guys want to buy this, but I always add my hardener first and I add my second part to the top of that. It makes it a bit easier to mix um, and you're pulling the hardener up into it. I just find a better mix when I'm mixing the hardener first into the actual second part. I only add one drop of black for this. Now I wish I would have went with a white or something more light to kind of define the pickups and the pick guard, but it is what it is. I was on the fly here. Now also in the link in the description below will be these little syringes. This has changed my game when it comes to epoxy. I used to just dump it on and like pull it off with a paddle. This little syringe is so awesome. Go down to the link, go over to my Amazon page and buy these because they will change the game when it comes to your epoxy. Next, we're gonna switch back over to the bowls. I'm gonna head over to the rigid oscillating sander and I'm gonna sand out the inside of these bowls. I find this so much fun and so satisfying. This is one of my favorite things to do in a shop, but I'll make those really, really, really smooth. Then I'll go over to the main work table and I'll do the same thing. Now I'm gonna glue the bottom on and I'm gonna let it kind of set up for just a couple minutes and kind of let it get a little tacky before I glue it up. All along the way, I'm cleaning up as much glue as I can to make sure that I don't have a bunch of glue marks on the inside. I got a nice wet rag for my glue cleanup. Now I am using Tide Bond 3. Now no glue like this is waterproof, but because of this was gonna get washed, I need to make sure I have the stickiest and tackiest glue I can. So I like the Tide Bond 3 for this application. I'll use some F clamps, clamp everything up real nice and tight. Now I got the bottom for the third bowl on so that they're all messed together and do the same thing. Once they've dried, I'll go ahead and pull off the clamps. Now it did take about two hours to dry. I'm kind of nesting it here and I'm realizing I should have put this top ring on so they set flat, but it is what it is. Back over to the oscillating sander. For me, this is like one of the funnest things. I love to sand on this thing. I just gently roll it around in a circle and get it so smooth and so flush. You can make bowls without a lathe. 24 hours later, my epoxy is set up, so just a few passes to the Jet 1632, and it's coming out like butter. At my main workbench, I have this quarter roundover bit on this benchtop router. This router is always there, it's always set up, so I will gently pass that around, going as smoothly, as quickly as I can, so I don't make burn marks and groove marks. And then I'll also do it to the bowl at the bottom. I'm not going to do the inside lip because I think it will look a little bit better. It'll be more a little more pristine if I had that sharp edge on the inside. But I will take some sandpaper and I will break that edge. Really like these little nesting bowls. Now this whole build is going to be a giveaway for you guys. So I'm going to definitely brand it here. But right now if you guys like this video and you're subscribed and you comment, Rockin' Guitar in the comments. I'm going to take the first hundred people that do that, I'm going to put them in a pool and I'm going to do a drawing and I'm going to ship this to you. So you could win this right now if you're subscribed and you comment Rockin' Guitar. So get over and do it. The last step I'm going to do here is I'm going to soak this stuff in some food grade mineral oil. This is one I've used multiple times. I built this awesome little tray, this little clear tray so I can do larger stuff. If you want to see how I build that, check out this card right here. And I'm going to let this soak in here for three different times for about 45 minutes a time. And it's kind of silly here because it's like I'm playing in the oil, but all this hard work to see this thing come to life is wonderful. Now I'll just go ahead and flood out my little bowls and make sure everything's super covered. Again, I'm going to pull this out, let it dry for about two hours, put it back in for 45 minutes. I'm going to do that three times. 
This gallon jug of white mineral oil, food safe mineral oil, uh, it's lasted me forever and I'm gonna have a link in the description below for it. This is kind of how I reuse it. So I let it soak in here and this bath kind of keeps it all together. Then when I'm ready, I kind of pull it off after this has gone three times in there. I have a bucket in the trash can and what I'm gonna do is wipe everything off then I'm gonna tilt my little tray right into the bucket. I lose maybe a teaspoon or tablespoon or two, maybe a quarter cup. But once I pour it in the bucket, then I'm easily able to pour it back in my jug. I've had this thing for a year and I've done a ton of different projects with it. So go down in the link in the description below, support the page, hit one of those affiliate links and buy this off the bottom. I'll give it kind of a light dusting at the end and I'm gonna let it dry out. Now, one of my subscribers said I don't show my projects for a long period of time, but so here it is. I like how the 16 ounce tub actually fits in the medium sized jar. This one came out so cool, guys. This is why I love this channel. Just a cool idea. Remember the, the theme of this channel is idea, design, and build. And now one of you, right there, you, can win this by commenting rock and guitar in the, in the comments right down below. I'm gonna take 100 people, I'm gonna put them in a pool, I'm gonna pick a name, and I'm gonna send it right to them. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share this video. And I'm Stoner Erickson from Erickson Design Company, and we built something. Ta -da! Oh yeah, that's gonna be real good.